Hey YouTube, Joseph Vollmer here. Hopefully you can hear me all right. What I'm currently sitting on is a Ford 515 sickle bar mower that I bought early last week so that uh, we can cut the hay this year without having to use the brush hog and hopefully get a little bit more hay out of it and make some money in the long run because when you brush hog it, although you can bale a lot of it, you do lose quite a bit to get shredded. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about the sickle bar here. Now this is the 515, so as you can see it is a belt drive. It is a pitmanless sickle bar. So it's got a belt drive that the belt drive that runs from the power PTO pulley here over to two idlers down to the slip clutch for the wobble box, which I've got the bar up, but that's the wobble box down there. That actually runs the bar now this brush hog or this sickle bar excuse me has a breakaway system on it it pivots away from the tractor now you see the chains I have hanging here the breakaway system is supposed to have a bracket that attaches to the lower link arm up here and comes back to this rod that I have leaned over in the chain here and I the I did was unable to get that bracket that bracket with the sickle bar he didn't have it and a lot of people will attach it to where the lower stabilizer link attaches down here but that pin on this one is not long enough so for the fields that I'm doing they're all pretty clear I'm just gonna have to be real careful and watch but I put the chain on here it does have a little slack in it so there'll be a little give but it will hold it in roughly the proper position um, now if you take a close look here guy I got it from actually took really good care of this I just it'd been sitting for a while that's why it's so rusty and I did put some oil on it the other night but he actually put all new segments on it the last year he used it all new guards and eh, some of these guards are a little used but you can tell they're all in good shape um, the wear plates are all in good shape yet and then if you look at the backside you can see he's got some of these shimmed he's gone through and shimmed them all so you know the ones that are necessary and he did use this regularly until he bought a bigger tractor so it is in good shape but it didn't come with the other half of the PTO shaft he'd misplaced it so after running around all day today I finally found the pieces that I'm going to need to mate it up to the PTO so here in just a minute I'm gonna go down to the house we're gonna get the other half of the shaft cut to length get it put on here and I will try and show you guys this in operation. Now, I couldn't just up and buy a new PTO shaft because on this one, this yoke is actually part of this hub assembly. So that wouldn't quite work there. I did go through the other night and grease everything except for two of the Zerk fittings that I need to replace before I use it. But we're going to go back through and just double check everything, get the drive shaft on, make sure it all works. And I'll bring you guys along for the ride. But as you can see, most of these wear plates are adjusted in there real nice. They're in good shape. So uh, this outer hold down is getting a little rough, but we'll, uh, we'll give her a try and see how it does. So come on along for the ride. Be back in a little bit. All right, guys. So this is what I got at the local tractor supply company. And after going to Buckeyes, Rural King, uh, Family Center, farm store and uh, tractor supply finally I found all the right parts of tractor supply Buckeyes had the shaft itself but they didn't have they had the shaft and they probably had the u-joint but they didn't have the uh, 12 series tractor end so I had to do some hunting around and after spending all afternoon running around I finally found them now this piece here is a cut to length so I'm gonna get my U-joint assembled in here, and then I'm gonna mate it up to the tractor, measure it all out, mark it, and cut it to length. And then it will slide over top of this shaft, and everything should work. So, being that this thing says I got plenty of battery, I'm gonna try and set you up so you can see me pound the U-joint in and we'll go from there. 
Now, one thing I will show you on this particular one, this is an inner retainer U-joint. So the retaining clips, if you can see, they clip in right there where my thumb is into that groove. So they ha those, ha those have to be exposed on the inside. And unfortunately, when I was at Buckeyes, they had this piece that's an inner retainer, but they only had these as outer retainers and none of the U-joints would work. And the way you can tell is if these are an outer retainer, inside here they'll have a machine groove up at the top to accept the clip. On the inner retainers, they're machine flat down there on that inside where my finger is. That's all machine flat so that that retainer rides right against that surface. So I'll get this thing set up and I'll show you how to assemble it. Okay guys, hopefully you can see this fairly well. So to do this, you're going to need a ball peen hammer. Well, any kind of a hammer will work, but a ball peen would be preferable. Um, and you're going to need a good solid surface, basically an anvil, if you will, to hammer against. You can use a vise. Um, you, you do need to be careful when you're hammering on these things. Now, these are all the parts of the U-joint. You have the joint itself, which I don't want to get the dirt. And then you have a little bag with the retainer clips and the grease fitting that now go in last. Now, you want to make sure that most of the time if you orient the grease fitting, in this case it comes out of the center, you orient that toward the rear, toward the shaft, it'll make it much easier to grease. Now, you remove the caps, you want to make sure you keep all the needle bearings, don't let them fall out, and don't let them get loose, because then they will be a royal pain to get back in. Take the two caps off, get your cross, get your the actual joint in very carefully without hopefully losing any of your needle bearings. Slide the cap down, make sure it'll seat all the way, which it does, and then Get this over on the edge of the end. We'll hold your, try and hold your U joint up there as best you can. And tap it in. Mm. Yeah, it just bounced. And I'm afraid. Nope. Okay, it's all the way back down. So I just need to drive it in far enough to get past the retainer. bouncing on me. That'd be in good shape. Flip it over, try and get the other side started. And I hope none of the little needle bearings fall loose. No, I don't like that. For one reason or another, there's not wanting to go in. Okay. I was afraid of. I knocked the bearing loose. Damn it. Yep. So now, I'm going to try and beat that cap back out. Oh, 
Maybe it didn't. Nope. Believe it or not, it's seated. So I can live with that. Whatever it was, it got crossed up, but it's back in place. Now what it should, this is what it should look like. You've got your inner retainer ring in the area for your inner retainer, and it's nicely seated. One side's just driven in a little further than the other, but I can correct that here in a minute. Now, we'll get that, we'll get our retainers in, and we'll go from there. Retainer clips just push into place. I'll show you here. You just take it, slide it into the groove. Whoop. Get over there in the groove. Slide into the groove, push down, and then click into place. That's all there is to it. If you look right there, we're sitting about dead center from that cross into the center of the shaft, which is where you want to be. Same, same principle with the other, with the tractor half. Now hopefully you guys can see okay here, but what I'm going to do to get this to the proper length, I'm going to slide it onto the tractor's PTO, and then the point where this is now, with these stabilizer arms straight, is going to be the longest point in this PTO shaft unless you trip the breakaway. So I want to make sure that I give it enough length that if the two halves will stay together, but I don't want to have too much too I don't want to have it extending onto this piece too far where when it is at a shorter length like lower down or raised all the way up that it butts into the back of it and binds up because if it does that it's going to break something. So being that it's we're right, rough, right now roughly at the longest point, if I give it, put it three quarters of the way inserted, that'll give me about four to five inches of space for the length change as you lower it down. And that'll give me plenty together. And I may actually favor closer to 75% and then I'll just check it for binding before I do anything and I can always I can always trim more off I can't I can't add more to this piece once I trim it so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim it longer than I think I need it 
and I'm going to test it. If it doesn't bind, I'm going to leave it that way. If it binds up, then I'll trim a little bit more off. So let me go get uh, let me go get my marker, and I'll be back. All right, guys, I'm back, and this is one of the Mark All Silver Streak uh, metal marking pencils. Um, fellow YouTuber, I saw it on his channel a while back, and I went I got on Amazon and bought one. These things are awesome, guys. So if you need something to mark on metal with, these things are the way to go. The only downside is if you're trying to cut with a sawzall and you get the guard down against it, you will rub it off. But uh, let's see, we'll give it about roughly, we'll give it about two inches of extra here. And we'll see how that ends up. So I'm going to mark that so I can cut it, and that's going to be pretty tight. Actually, let's go right up here. Okay, got it marked. I'm going to square it up. I'll get it cut, and then I am going to take a wire wheel and get all the corrosion and crud off of this half before I try and slide them together. So that way, hopefully everything slides together nice and easy. So. I'll get it cut, and then we'll be back. All right, guys, I'm back. Now, I did have to, after I made my initial cut, I had to go back and take another four inches off because I couldn't even get it compressed far enough to get it onto the tractor. Now I got about three inches there. And... That actually fits really nice. So, I'll give you a shot here. You can see that's where the two meet. Now, the other end is up in there a good ways yet. So, we got plenty of support. Mates up to the tractor real nice. Now I'm going to fire it up and I'm going to raise it up and down to make sure everything is working the way it's supposed to when I raise it up and down. And let me back out here so you can get a better view. Make sure that it doesn't separate or bind. But my problem before was it was hitting back here, so I couldn't, I would never be able to get past this point without it binding up. So, here goes. Basically, to uh, get a little bit more of the weight off this end of the ball. 
But, really? I think we're ready to try it out and see if it's cut. Alright guys, do me a favor, you've seen me set this thing up on here, uh, get that PTO shaft cut and put on, uh, get the U-joint put together. I went through, oiled the bar again, let it run for a minute. Uh, now, I'm going to take it out, see if it'll cut, so check for that in another video. Do me a favor, please rate the video, whether you like it or not, do me a favor and rate it. Um, and Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Uh, I know this isn't real informative on these on this Ford 515. Uh, I am trying to find some more information about it, out about it, to possibly make a more informative video in the future. Um, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot on YouTube, and there's not a whole lot online. I'm going to have to try and do some hunting around and see if I can find maybe even a manual for this thing. Um, which I know those are out there. I've seen them on Amazon or eBay, one of the two. Um, but I will try and bring you some videos with some more information. And stay tuned. Keep your eyes open because um, here, probably tonight, I'm going to try and get it cut as long as it's not too wet because we didn't get quite a bit of rain earlier today. Uh, it feels like it's pretty well dried down, but and hopefully this thing is well enough adjusted with good teeth on here. Uh, if it's a little damp underneath, it's not going to plug. But at least that way I get it down and get it get it cut and get it on the ground. Um, we're supposed to have a nice sunny day tomorrow. And I think a nice sunny day on Monday. So hopefully by tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening, I can at least get it raked up in windrows, get it kind of fluffed up and off the ground and uh, ready to bail. But anyway, guys, do me a favor. Keep posted for those videos because I will be making videos raking and bailing the hay. Um, and we're all using antique equipment here. I mean, this 515. Uh, at best is probably out of the 70s so uh, the rake I've got is an old new idea I think it's a 504 it's a four bar hay rake um, that thing is not anything new by any stretch of the imagination and the square barrel square square baler I will be using is an old John Deere 24 T so you're gonna see you'll see it all I'll get some video of it running and hopefully everything runs without a hitch and doesn't go to pot on me let's put it that way um, but you'll see it one way or the other so guys please stay tuned for more we'll catch you later thanks for watching guys don't forget don't be afraid to get out there and get your hands dirty you just might have a